welcome back again, folks. I've been uh, having some camera problems here. Well, first down, I know y'all's gonna like my my shirt here. This is a really old, or what's left of it, camel shirt. It's got some crap on the back of it there, if you can see it. Uh, I just came in from mowing, and it's like 200 degrees. It's, it's 94 is what it is outside here. And I just came in from mowing. I got on shorts and this uh, piece of a shirt. It's really cool, though. I mean, well, it's, if it was white, it'd be cooler, but the sun wasn't out today. It's just really, it was out, but not much. Anyways, all that uh, aside... I uh, leveled the frets on this guitar. I straightened the neck, I leveled the frets, put the radius back in, uh, crowned all the frets, and I kept noticing on my camera, uh, well, back up, the other day when I did the inspection video, I kept noticing then files disappearing on my camera. Didn't know where they was going. So I, you know, film inside again, and then the file would reappear when I uploaded them to the computer. Some of them reappeared. And, uh, in the process of doing these frets, I realized that all the files, and I think there were like three of them on there, of me leveling and uh, putting the radius back in and crowning them. I, and I went through all these grits of sandpaper and polished every fret. Had all that on video. It's all gone. It's all history now and past. Uh, so I'm going to watch that camera very Well, actually, that's a different camera that I'm using there right now. There's a crown file. Still out. Now I am up to the point uh, I need to put uh, semi-chrome polish on it. And I ordered me another tube of that shit, by the way. There's my old tube. I've had that like more than 30 years, I think. And uh, someone, one of you guys, several of you guys suggested that uh, I can get it from Amazon. So I went ahead and ordered it right then and there. And there you go. Brand new tube of this glorious stuff. Miracle sand. And right now, I'm going to go over all these frets and polish them with this. Get rid of the sandpaper. And uh, polish them with this. And we're going to put on a set of Martin MSP 7200 uh, strings. That's immediate. These are treated. They're not coated like Elixir. I don't like uh, Elixir's coating. These are just treated. MSP 7200, medium gauge. Uh, the first string is a .013, and the sixth string is a .056. These strings are going to wake this top up. You heard what it sounded like the other day when it first came. With light, I think there's a light gauge strings. They were way lighter than these, I, I can tell you that. These are going to bring this baby alive. I'm telling you, man, this is just going to be unreal, what this guitar is going to sound like. Talk to the owner a little bit about putting a tusk saddle in, and uh, I recommend they leave it bone because of the way this thing sounds. I think a tusk saddle might be a little bit much for this guitar. So uh, I'm going to just forget that, keep the bone saddle we have. I'll probably have to take some away to lower the action. He wants the action 664 on the bass string, 12th fret, and 564 on the the high E string, 12 fret. Anyways, I'm going to polish the frets right now. And I'll bring you over here for just a little bit of that. Maybe I'll bring you over and show you a before and after. And uh, you can decide if you want to try this on your frets or not. It's all I use, man. I've used Neverdoll and a whole bunch of that other crap. Dunlop and all kinds of money-taking things you can spend your money on. That right there works. And it also works, as I have showed you, for removing scratches from the finish. It's handy. I, you could probably, well, I'm not going to say what I'm thinking, but you could probably use that for just about anything. Cheers. Hold on. I'll, I'll bring you over here closer. All right. Going to try the new semi-chrome on this and see if anything has changed from the old days, the old formula, whatever they put in that stuff. Wow, that really comes out of there. Doesn't seem like it's as thick as the old stuff. Then again, and like I say, it's 94 degrees here today. It's not that hot in here, but it's pretty dang warm. i got to get my air conditioning serviced. And uh, really soon. <laughs> Very much soon. Someone asked me about what if you get this stuff on the fretboard. It's okay. If you get it on the fretboard, it's fine. It's not going to hurt your fretboard. 
In fact, it will help clean it. I'll get it clean. I'm just going to show you a little bit of this. I won't bore you completely to death with this, but get it started here. Show you maybe the difference. I took as lightly a little bit off of these frets as I could possibly get by with. Now this guitar, we want it to have a nice long life. And uh, you want to re remove as little of material from the frets as you need to. These frets are pretty small too, by the way. They're really tiny frets. Unlike uh, jumbo frets, nothing like jumbo frets. They're very, very small. Yeah, that stuff seems to work just as well as the old formula half-inch semi-chrome polish. What is that? The sixth fret, the last one I did. And I want to put wind seed at this board. Looks like it's really dry. And this entire guitar has been pretty dry. I don't want to show you the humidity levels here. Right now, check this out. 75% humidity in this room. <laughs> so I think you might agree I have got to get my air condition uh, serviced and on. I've been asked quite a lot about putting on linseed oil. Boiled or unboiled. Well, it doesn't have to be boiled or unboiled. Either or both will work. One will work just as well as the other. I like to just soak the cloth with it. And uh, start up here at the nut and just uh, start rubbing it in. Try to get right up to the frets, to every fret, as closely as possible. And just rub it in, man. This stuff, man, it works wonders. I mean, this board is so dry. I thought I was maybe seeing a crack starting to form in the board. Uh, get my visors out here in a little bit and look at that closer. I don't know. Hopefully it's that's not the case, but it kind of looks like a crack may be starting to form. Uh, I think this is ebony. But it sure is dry, man. Good Lord, this wood is dry city. fretboard I'm talking about. Beautiful, beautiful wood, beautiful guitar. It doesn't hurt if you get this uh, linseed on the finish, like if I got it on the top of the guitar right here. Don't hurt it. But do get it off of there as quickly as possible if you do get it on your top. Do try to uh, get rid of it quickly because it will dry. It'll dry on there, and then it'll be a little bit uh, tougher to remove. I don't know if I have enough on that rag to do the bridge or not. So I'm going to get another little dousing of it here, and you don't want to spill that shit either. Not a good idea. Now there again, when rubbing this stuff off, you just want to rub it in circular motions. Spread it out evenly as you can. Don't try to rub every bit on there off. Leave some behind. But not a lot. You know, I heard some people talking about their guitar getting really hot for whatever reason and this stuff kind of gelling up on the fret fretboard. That'd be terrible, man. You don't leave that much of it on there. You just want a very thin coating to penetrate the, the open grain and uh, then solidify and protect it. And that's all it takes. And it makes the board look just beautiful, man. Alright, this is a macro lens. And it's very hard to hold still. But right in the center of your screen, running from the top right corner to the lower left corner, is the crack. And it is a crack. And there's two of them. If I come on up here... You can see another one right there, and it's quite a lot longer than the uh, first one I just showed you. God dang, I can't hold these things still, man. See it? 
that's a crack, folks. It is a crack. Um, this one starts right here and runs all the way up to right there. See it there? I think you can see it in the, the film, the video. Let me uh, put the other lens on. I'll be right back. Just wait right there. Like where else would you wait? This is a 12th fret, okay? And you can see that little crack right here comes all the way up to here, if I can get the light right on it. Now you can't see it so much with this lens. And then another crack starts here at the 11th fret. Comes all the way up to the, what is that, 7th fret, I think. Can you see that? It's not bad, but it's just, we caught it in time, I think. But it's just starting to... Uh, starting to form anyway there's you a quick look at the finished frets turned out really nice look like brand new frets see how tiny the frets are they're not very big frets uh i already got fingerprints on some of them and dust i see it with my eyes <laughs> i mean what else am i going to look at it with my ears all right well let's put on martin msp 7200 treated strings man why do they do that? There's like the first string and fourth string is in here. This one's got the second and fifth and then third and sixth. What? You know, I bought these a lot of these. I buy them by the case sometimes. And uh, they're not always like this. Look at this. I hate this. Cheap bastards. Come on, man. I mean, seal each individual string in its own pack for crying out loud. How ridiculous is that? Now I've got all the uh, pins, bridge pins over here laid out in the order that I took them out. So I should have lined up all these holes in the order and the direction I wanted them. I'm not going to bore you too much with me doing this. But I uh, figured I'm waiting. At least get it started here. Show you. This is going to take a little bit to put all the strings on. Even with the key winder I'm using here. It's just much faster with it. But it's still going to take a while. And I won't bore you completely to death with this. Just uh, bore you enough to make you mad. <laughs> I get asked a lot about. Do I stretch my strings? Yes I do. I'm going to show you how I do it. I just tune it up. It's not even up to pitch yet. But it was in tune. I get a hold of the string about the 12th fret because that's about the middle point and I just hold the guitar down and get a hold of the string like so and you can't see my hand and just stretch it you know pretty good a few times do them all that way you, you ain't gonna you know fairly good stretch it out and then you don't have any tuning issues when you go to to actually tune it up and play on the guitar I can even feel that string right there stretch. But that's the way I do it. I just, uh, you know, stretch them all out one at a time, about the 12th fret. And a couple times over like this. And uh, tune it up. And you don't have any more string stretching problems. They make a tool called String Stretcher. If you guys want to look that up, you can. <laughs> it's real. It exists. All right. Now, I've tightened the truss rod up in this before I put strings on it because I knew it had I uh, mentioned before in one of the videos it had way too much neck relief in it it was more than 12 it was about 14 I think so I tightened the truss rod up uh, probably I'll have to take the saddle out and sand it down the owner wants the action at 664 on the low E and that's exactly what it is and he wants 564 on the high E, 45. We're dead on the money, man. My God, that don't happen nearly often enough. 664, low E, 12th fret. And 564, high E at the 12th fret. Wow, that does not happen frequently enough. Let's check some neck relief here now. He, he also wants uh, 12 thousandths. I told him, I said, if you're kind of light-handed, you might want to, you know, you could even get by with going like with 10 thousandths. And uh, he said he uh, 
frequently jars down on it, so he would rather have 12. So that's would be a miracle if we land on that too. Unbelievable. Right dead on the money, man. That is a 12, isn't it? Yes, it is. 17th fret. Look at that, folks. Dead on the money. And you couldn't ask for a better fit than that. The neck relief is... Shit! I didn't have to do anything to this guitar, man. <laughs> I'm telling you what. It just pretty much fixes itself, you might say. All right, I'm going to check the uh, check the tuning and intonation again. Wow, just friggin' wow! You couldn't get any. It's it's dead on. It's right on the money. I don't know how it sounds in the camera. That sounded sharp to me, but it's on the money on here. strings better after they've been, you know, after you've played on them a little bit, loosen them, uh, stretch them out more. They just sound kind of twangy when you first put them on, but not on this guitar. My God, man. Now, he wanted that action up where I set it there so you could do that. I wish you could hear this in this huge room, man. It's filling the whole room up. Unbelievable.
I can't play it, but it plays. You can look at the action here yourself. It's, uh, you can see it's very, very low. I, I can't see it, but hopefully you'll be able to. Extremely low, man. Uh, 664 on the base side. And uh, what did I say? 564 on the high east side. Now, what all did we do? Let's uh, re recap here. I didn't do anything to the ridge pins. I left them sticking up a little bit like they are. Because like Dave Dahl on the Martin uh, channel says, the wood swells and it dries and shrinks and they'll still fit right, you know, as the guitar does that. So left them alone. What did we do? Not very damn much, basically. We uh, took the strings off. I tightened the truss rod. I leveled all the frets. Put the radius back in the frets. Crowned all the frets. Polished all the frets. Then seed uh, the fretboard and the bridge. And then I uh, just did a setup on it pretty much. Put everything in the strings all back on it. And uh, landed right on exactly the action that the owner wants it on. Set the neck relief at 12,000. That's uh, what he wanted it on. But I recommend that too. Especially if you have a heavy hand now and then. But you know you could get by with probably a 10 or even an 8 on that neck relief. If you play very lightly. Uh, lubricated the keys. What else, man? I can't think. I think that's all. Oh, I'll tell you, I, have, I know something I did not do. I did not seal this crack back here. So you're going to see the guitar again. It per Now, let me show you this. That crack pretty well went together itself. Check this out. 73% humidity right now in here. I don't know what it is outside, but I'm sure it's probably more than that. And just as I figured, as the humidity went up, that crack on the back of that neck closed and I think it's completely closed now but I am going to put a little a bit, uh, just a, a tiny bit of glue around that check this out right here well hold on I can't touch the damn thing right here is humidity right there 92 percent that's outside but that's still crazy it's just freaking crazy man but just as I figured that crack went back together as the humidity went up you know the wood swelled up that bare wood inside the crack I'm talking about and it went back together so I'm gonna put a tiny bead of glue around that probably thick CA glue so it doesn't run back in there but just seal the crack so you know the outer elements cannot screw with that anymore so you probably will see the guitar again uh, I'll probably crack this up and give you a better demo on it too because this guitar is worthy, man. And like I say, I basically didn't have to do much to it. A guitar like that, you know, you, you really don't have to do very much to them once they are set up right. This one was a little off when it came here. Like I said, it had way too much neck relief in it or so, I thought. Well, it did have. It had too much neck relief. The action was kind of funky even with those light strings on it. Boy, these strings here, man, they really bring that top alive. So yeah, you'll see it again before it leaves here. Thanks for watching, folks. Good Lord. Go out to a music store, find a guitar like this, and play it for yourself. You'll see what I'm talking about. Cheers. Thanks for watching, and thanks for everything. I'll see you again very soon.